Climate change has caused more severe and dangerous wildfires all over the world. Just last week, the Loma Fire in Santa Barbara, California, triggered evacuations and burned through hundreds of acres. The fire is now mostly contained. But scientists say that some wildfires never completely go away. A new study found so-called zombie fires in far northern forests only hibernate during the winter. These fires are able to smolder underground during the coldest months until they can visibly reappear. These so-called zombie fires are not common right now, but scientists predict that they may become more frequent as the climate continues to change. For more, I want to bring in Randy uh, Jant. Randy is a fire ecologist with the Alaska Fire Science Consortium based at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Thank you for being here. I, you know, people are going to hear this phrase, zombie fires, and really want to know more. So let's just start off by having you explain how are these zombie fires able to survive throughout the winter? Well, um, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of an interesting phenomenon. Um, the Alaska Fire Management Agencies had been noticing a few more instances of uh, fires uh, holding over, uh, even through the winter. Firefighters have always had to contend with holdover fires, you know, uh, where fires burn deep into a fuel like the pile of debris in your backyard, and they appear to be out. Maybe there's not even any smoke, but there's heat holding inside, just waiting for the surface to dry out and then warm up enough again for flaming combustion. And so a deep fire in Alaska, like the picture there, may may actually burn the roots out under the trees so all the trees are just laying on the ground and that fire has gone deep into the uh, duff, peat-like uh, duff material and is holding in there. And sometimes as our fire seasons get longer in the north and the winters get shorter, they can actually hold down in this peaty material and uh, all winter. So we had been noticing a few more of these type of phenomenon uh, in the 2000s, really. If you'd asked me about zombie fires in the 1990s, I was working in Alaska, I would have said they happen once in a blue moon. Uh, you know, I wrote a little story about a zombie fire in 1942 on our uh, Alaska Fire Science Consortium blog that gobbled up 300,000 acres, but, you know, I would have said it's a rare event without much significance. But we started to notice them more well, that and more. You know? and, uh, and so then that's how this study came about. They decided to uh, launch really the first scientific study of this phenomenon, and that was just published in Nature. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I want uh, to understand why these zombie fires are especially dangerous for the planet. Well, uh, because most of the biomass, the carbon uh, and, and methane that's stored uh, in a forest in Alaska is actually stored subsurface. It's the trees are fairly small, and that peat material has the bulk of the carbon in it. So as fires begin to burn deeper, they have other ecological effects as well, but uh, they also release more of this biomass in carbon dioxide. And uh, as the fires mm -hmm. remove that insulation, that duff insulation, then it can also allow, allow permafrost to thaw, which also uh, can release a, a carbon that's been stored sure. and frozen around. Additional negative ramifications for the planet when that permafrost is melted. So, what tools are out there to help firefighters, first of all, detect these zombie fires? And is there any way to put them out before they reemerge and really cause so much devastation? Well, like you say, first we have to detect them. And Rebecca and Sanders' study, uh, they're the remote sensing specialists. Um, who kind of conducted this study uh, uh, at the behest of fire managers, actually. Um, so from with the new satellite remote sensing tools um, and an algorithm that uh, Rebecca designed, um, they can sort of predict, there's a certain amount of predictability to these events. We know now that kind of where, what fuels they might occur in. And uh, we know that they are likely to occur after large fire seasons with drought that can dry the fuels down, the duff down deep. 
And so we have a better idea of, I guess, when and where to look. That helps. But from a firefighter's perspective, digging these things out is uh, can be tough because, you know, they burn very deep into the ground. They can create hazardous ash pits that um, if that fire's down there into the snow all winter, burning out, um, you know, you have to watch where you step. You might step uh, into one of those ash pits that goes above your boots and causes severe burns. And that oh. happened a couple times in 2019 to firefighters. All right. Well, Randy, Jan, thank you for your time and for coming on and, and helping to explain this for all of us. Thank you very much.